All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about open source intelligence. We will first start by understanding what it is, and then we'll move on to actually perform open source intelligence on a target by using a very popular tool known as Multigo. So first of all, what exactly is OSINT, open source intelligence? Well, as the name suggests, it's nothing but the practice of gathering useful information from publicly available resources. Or in even simpler words, it's nothing but searching on collecting useful and critical information about your target from the internet, from open source resources that are publicly available for anyone to access. Now, it may be hard to believe, but internet has a lot of data. A lot of data can be publicly available to you. You just need to know how to systematically look at it and, and where to search for it, basically. And you can find a lot of crucial, interesting information about your target. And when I say target, it might be a company or organization or just an individual. So in this video, we're going to explore open source intelligence with Multigo, which is a very popular tool when it comes to the OSINT domain. Multigo comes pre-installed with Kali Linux, but in this video, we are going to use Multigo in a separate isolated Docker container. Because when you're conducting an investigation on a company or just an individual, staying anonymous yourself while performing this investigation is part of your task. So by using Multigo in an isolated Docker container, you're making sure that you leave no tracks about yourself. And in order to do that, we'll be using Chasm workspaces. So if you're a regular watcher of my channel, I already made a video about what Chasm is. It basically is a Docker streaming platform. You can basically stream different types of Docker images right from your web browser using Chasm workspaces. It's as simple as creating a container of any particular image. And once you're done using that container, you can just simply destroy that session and everything will be vanished. That Docker container will be killed, which means you basically leave no traces using that particular container. So you can install Chasm workspaces on your Linux machine. You can refer to the Chasm workspaces requirements page uh, if you want to know which operating systems it supports and the minimum system requirements. But in this video, I'm going to install Chasm on my AWS EC2 instance that I have just created. By doing so, I'm making sure that the containers that I spawn up using Chasm, in this case, the Multigo container that I'll be spawning up, it doesn't actually run on my local machine. And it also prevents my personal IP address from getting leaked because I'm installing it on my AWS virtual computer. So it's an awesome way of keeping your identity private while also being able to use different tools, different apps that Chasm supports. Anyways, I have logged into my AWS EC2 instance through SSH and I'm going to go ahead and install Chasm. So you can refer to the installation page of Chasm. Uh, the first step is to create a swap partition. So I'll just copy these commands and paste them. I'm basically creating a swap partition for Chasm to install. You can find the Chasm installation guide in the description below so you can refer it and copy paste all the commands that are required to install Chasm. All right, so you can see I'm done creating the swap partition. The next step is to actually make the swap partition available on boot. So there's a command for that as well that is listed in this installation guide. So you can just copy that and paste it here. All right, so the next step is to download Chasm Workspaces installer. So I'll just go to my temp directory so that I have the right access. And in this case, I'm downloading the developer build of Chasm, which has the new UI. But if you want a stable version, you can just download the stable version as well. It's completely your choice. So I'm just going to copy the download link here, come back and download it with curl. All right, so now I'll extract it with tire, go to the extracted folder. And all I have to do is run this install.sh script with sudo. So I'll just say sudo install.sh. And that's going to install Chasm. Now it's going to take a little bit of time, like around 10 minutes for Chasm to install because it's also going to download all the pre-built images and load them up. Just be patient. I'm just going to pause the video here and come back once the installation is done. All right. So once the installation is done, it gives you the login credentials. So you can go to HTTP colon slash slash your IP address, which in my case is my AWS instances public IPv4 address followed by colon 443 because uh, the Chasm uh, web interface is running on this port. So you can just hit enter and that's going to take you to your Chasm workspaces. Okay, it seems like we need to use HTTPS instead of HTTP. So let's fix that. Click on advanced, click on proceed. 
and there's your Chasm Workspaces dashboard. So you can just log in with the credentials that uh, Chasm gave you. Just gonna copy that, paste it, copy the password, paste it here. Log in. There you go. This is how the dashboard is going to look like. So you can click on workspaces here and it's going to now list a bunch of apps that are pre-built on Chasm. So you can see by default, Maltigo doesn't exist in the list of pre-built apps here. That is because we have to add it ourselves. This is the Docker image of Maltigo for Chasm Web. I'll leave the link to it in the description as well. So we will be uh, pulling this develop tag over here. So we'll be adding this Docker image to Chasm. In order to do that, I'll go back to Chasm, go to admin, go to workspaces, click on add a workspace, and the workspace type would be a container. Friendly name would be Maltigo. Description, I'll just put it as Maltigo. I'll enable this image. And for the Docker image, you need to enter uh, the name of the image and the tag. So for now, we will be going with the develop version here. So I'll just copy this uh, Docker pull command from Docker Hub, come back here, paste it here, and then I'll just remove Docker pull from the starting. So it's just going to be chasm web slash multigo colon develop develop is the tag here and then i can choose the number of cores that i want to allocate to multigo so i'll just choose one core and 2048 which means two gigs of memory i do not have a gpu so i'll just leave it as zero for gpu count the cpu allocation method should be inherit and finally for the docker registry since we are pulling this image from docker hub it should be https index.docker.io slash v1 this should be the docker registry in case you're pulling it from Docker Hub, which we are. So that's it. You can leave the rest of the things as it is and then just click on submit. And this is going to create that image. So if you go back to workspaces now, you can see Maltigo now appears in the list, but the image itself is not yet available. And this means that it is still not finished downloading. So give it some time, like five to 10 minutes, depends on the size of the image. So it, Chasm has to actually pull that image from Docker Hub and load it up. All right, so it did not take much time, took around two minutes. Now, if I just click on Maltigo, I can open a new session in a new tab, click on launch session. That is going to open Maltigo in an isolated Docker container like this, and you can access it right from your browser, which is awesome, right? And also make sure you allow the access to clipboard so that you can copy and paste stuff from Maltigo. All right, so now we're gonna solve this challenge that is named as Keeber from NAMCON 2022. So there are basically eight tasks and we will solve all these eight tasks by making use of open source intelligence. So let's go through the first task. You have been applying to an entry level cybersecurity jobs focused on reconnaissance and open source intelligence. Great news, you got an interview with a small cybersecurity company called the Kiber Security Group. Before interviewing, they want to test your skills through a series of challenges oriented around investigating the uh, Kiber Cybersecurity Group. The first step in your investigation is to find more information about the company itself. All we know is that the company is named as Kiber Security Group and they are a cybersecurity startup. To start, helpers find the person who registered their domain. The flag is in the regular format. So um, the first task is very straightforward. They just want us to know who registered the Kiber Security website. So first of all, in order to find that out, we need to find the actual domain name of this Kiber Security. So I'll just perform like a quick uh, Google search for Kiber Security Group and look what comes up. Uh, there seems to be a domain called kibersecuritygroup.com and that seems to be our target now. So now that we have the domain, we can just do a who is lookup on this domain to find out who registered it. So if you're on Linux, you can just type in who is followed by the domain name. Make sure you get the HTTPS stuff out. And now if you go to the registrant name, you can see the flag right there. And that is how you would solve the first task of this OSINT challenge. Now, if you want to do it with Maltigo, you can do it that as well. So the way Maltigo works is that you can apply different kinds of transforms to your entities. A transform is nothing but a functionality, or you could even call it an automation. And you can apply the necessary transforms or functionalities to entities in order to collect 
data from open source resources. So in this case, I have a domain entity uh, for the domain kibersecurity.com, kibersecuritygroup.com, I mean. So if I want to gather or look up the Whois data, I can just right click on it. I can see all the transforms available for this type of entity. So I'll search for who is here and looks like there are four transforms available related to the who is a lookup. So first one is two domain to find the other TLDs using the who is a lookup. And the second one is to find the email addresses which are included in the who is lookup. The third one is to find all the entities from the who is lookup. And the fourth one is to find all the phone numbers from the who is lookup. So for example, if I select two email address here, that's going to give me or gather all the email addresses that are mentioned in the who is info of this particular domain. In the same way, if I select two phone numbers here, that's going to give me the phone numbers that are mentioned in um, in the who is info. In this case, this is the phone number of the registrant. So anyway, we have solved the first task of this challenge. So let's move on to the second task. The Kiba Security Group is a new startup in its infant stages. The team is always changing and some people have left the company. The Kiba Security Group has been quick with changing their website to reflect these changes, but there must be some way to find the ex-employees. Find an ex-employee through the group's website. The flag is in the regular format. So if you come to the kibersecuritygroup.com website, there is a page that says team. So if I click on that, it lists down all the team members uh, that are currently part of uh, Kiba Security Group. But our task is to find an ex-employee who has already left the company. Now there is a hint here in the problem statement. It says here that the Kiba Security Group has been quick with changing their website to reflect these changes. This suggests that whoever the ex-employee it is that we are trying to find was at some point listed in this teams page but right now they're removed from this team page so so our task is to find a snapshot of this website or this particular page at some point in the past so that maybe we will be able to find the name or the information about the ex-employee that we are trying to find. So we can make use of a service known as Wayback Machine in order to find a snapshot in the past. So let's go back to Maltigo. Maltigo actually has a transform using which you can use Wayback Machine. So I'll just right click on the domain and I'll search for Wayback Machine. There you go, there is a transform that says two snapshots Wayback Machine. I'm just gonna apply this transform to my entity. And look at that. Maltigo is able to fetch different snapshots of this website from the past. So I can go ahead and open up this snapshot by clicking on this archived page URL. If I just click on it, it's going to automatically open up uh, the browser. And this is the about page, but what we're interested in is the team page. So let's see if the team page is also available. I'll click on team and looks like our ex-employee is still not listed here. So what we can do is we can actually choose a snapshot which is earlier than this particular snapshot. So there is a timeline here if you could notice. So I'll just, for example, you know, click over here to see if there is any snapshot before this um, in hopes of finding our ex-employee. So let's see here. Oh, there you go. This is the ex-employee that we are looking for because there is a flag under her email address. Tiffany Douglas. I have no idea if that is how it must be spelled, but she is a junior security engineer and her email address is also mentioned. Kiba Security Group at Proton. Okay, that's I think the general uh, email address. Anyway, so this is the flag that we wanted. So we have now also successfully solved the second task. Let's move to the third task. The ex-employee you found was fired for committing a secret to public GitHub repositories. Find the committed secret and use that to find confidential company information. The flag is in the regular format. So they're referring to a GitHub repository, which, uh, which actually hints that this company has a GitHub profile, obviously, because only if they have a GitHub profile, they'll be able to post uh, or create new GitHub repositories, right? So in order to find this GitHub repository, uh, we can go back to Maltigo here. I'll come back to my graph. So I'll just right click on my domain and I will search for a transform that will be able to gather all the links that are related to this particular domain. So I'll search for something like website, site or something like that. And look at this, this second transform here that says to website mentioning domain. Uh, this looks interesting. So let's actually try to apply that. Uh, our hope 
is to actually be able to find the github profile of the domain so let's see if it is able to find it so it gave us a lot of uh, websites here and there is also a github url that is written so if i uh, select it you can see it shows you the actual url so that actually looks like the github profile of keyboard security group so if i just click on it there you go this is the GitHub profile of Kiber Security Group. That's great, but that's not the end of the task. It says here that uh, we have to find the committed secret. The ex-employee has apparently, you know, pushed or published some secret to one of the GitHub repositories on the company's uh, GitHub profile. So we actually have to find that uh, confidential information uh, using that uh, secret. So let's go back to the GitHub profile. There are three repositories here. Let's go through the first repository, security evaluation workflow. There are 19 commits for it. So let's go through all the 19 commits. So you can see there are different GitHub accounts that are pushing uh, to this uh, repository. But the name of our employee who apparently, you know, pushed the secret to the GitHub repository and was fired for the, for the reason uh, is Tiffany. So we look into the commits made by Tiffany. So I'll click on keyboard Tiffany here. And these are all the commits made by her. So let's start checking from the oldest commit. Added code reviews.txt. Okay, there seems to be nothing interesting there. And then the next one is added.git ignore. Okay. All right. So this seems a little bit interesting. You can see what Tiffany tried to do here. She tried to add a file called asana secret.txt into the git ignore file, but it seems like she, uh, she misspelled it. She missed the T uh, in txt. So what that did is it did not properly hide this asana secret.txt file. And for that reason, this particular file is also pushed to the repository. And this file contains some text like this, which is our secret. Now, it doesn't look like a flag, so that means we are supposed to do something else with it. So if we just Google what is meant by Asana here, it seems like Asana is some, uh, you know, team management platform and uh, let's go to their website to see if there is anything that we can do. Just by looking at this, it looks like some kind of an API key or something to access the API. So let's see if there is any uh, documentation for Asana. So let's go to resources, developers here. Check this out. This actually looks like an authorization token. You can see there is an example that is provided on the documentation of Asana. And uh, this is the authorization token that is provided, which looks very similar to our secret. So let's actually try this curl command on our terminal, paste it here, and I'm gonna replace the authorization token with my uh, secret that Tiffany posted onto the repository. And let's see if we get anything. Okay, so we got some response, some JSON response. And in the name field, you can see there exists our flag. So yeah, Tiffany posted the authorization token for Asana API, and that resulted in the confidential information of the company being leaked. And we were able to find it using open source intelligence. Okay, let's move on to the next task. The ex-employee in Focus made other mistakes while using the company's GitHub. All the employees were supposed to commit code using the Kiber protonmail.com email that is assigned to them. They made some commits without following this practice. Find the personal email of this employee through GitHub. The flag is in the regular format. So our job is to find the personal email address of the employee of this ex-employee because apparently she had also done one other mistake which is committing from her personal email address. So let's go back to the commits made by uh, Tiffany again. Let's uh, open each commit and let's see the email address from where this commit is posted. So I'll just open this one. And the thing is on GitHub, it doesn't show you the email address from which that particular commit has been made by default, but we can change that. Uh, there is a little trick actually. So if you add dot patch at the end of this commit URL, that is going to give you a raw uh, thing like this. And here you can see the from address, the from email address from where this commit has been posted. So this is the protonmail.com email address. So this is not what we're looking for. So let's move on to the next commit made by Tiffany. Let's add dot patch at the end here. And once again, this is the proton email. So that's not what we're looking for. Let's go to the next commit. 
add dot patch at the end and check this out tiff hearts signs at the rate gmail.com that sounds a lot like a personal email address to me so that should be the personal email address of tiffany and here is also our flag for uh, this particular task so we were now able to find the personal email address of tiffany who is the ex-employee at keyboard security group after all of the damage the ex-employee's mistakes caused to the company the keyboard security group is suing them for negligence in order to file a proper lawsuit we need to know where they are so someone can go and serve them can you find the ex-employee's new workplace? The flag is in regular format and can be found in a recent Yelp review of their new workplace. Um, and there is also a hint that is given. You will need to pivot off the email found in the past challenge. So we now have the personal email address of uh, Tiffany. So using this, we should be able to find out her social media presence. So since we have the personal email address of uh, Tiffany, what we can do is we can make use of this particular information uh, to see if there is any other online presence of her. So I'm just going to copy this part of the email address, Stiff Heart Science, because that seems to be like her online uh, identity, something like that, like a username or something. She could be having, you know, other social media accounts with this particular username. So I'll just come back to uh, Maltigo and I'll open up a new graph here. This time I'll add a person entity. I'll just drag and drop it here. And I will name it as Tiffany Hearts Science. So in order to see if there exists any information about Tiff Hearts Science, uh, I'll just right click on it and I'll use the two website Bing transform. And what this is going to do is it's going to search the person's name on Bing and it's going to return all these search results. So let's apply that transform. Uh, click on run and let's see if that brings up anything interesting. Okay, so right off the bat, you can see a Instagram profile and a GitHub profile as well. So let me open that Instagram profile and look at that. That is indeed our Tiffany. That's great, but we still need to find her new location or the new location of her new workplace, right? And not to forget, we also have her GitHub profile and on our Gritter profile, if you can notice, it shows that our location is somewhere in Maine. So it is very much possible that her new workplace is also located in Maine, right? So let's actually go back to our Instagram profile and let's see what else we can find, if we can find any useful information. All right, check out her most recent post. It says, I'm glad I got to join the team this time of the year. I set up all the lights in the courtyard and it looks beautiful. So it looks like Tiffany is now working in some kind of a hotel or something by the looks of the image. The third image, it looks like some kind of a meme when you have to clean the pool at work during a storm, but the pool is indoors. Now that definitely tells something. It hints at us that the hotel that she's working at has an indoor pool, right? That's what that's what it says there. So we can search for the hotels which are located in Maine that have an indoor pool. And in the problem statement, they also said that the flag can be found in an Yelp review. So let me go to Google and let's do a quick search for main hotels with indoor pools, something like that. All right, so after searching for the hotels in Maine which have indoor pools, I came across this particular hotel uh, on tripadvisor.com and you can see this fireplace actually resembles the, the image that is posted on Tiffany's Instagram profile. So I'm just going to search for this uh, particular restaurant on uh, Yelp.com and we have to look for the reviews because that is where the flag is meant to be there. So let's go through the reviews. So check this out. After a lot of searching for the reviews uh, of this hotel, I finally found a review from someone known as Tiffany D uh, who is from Portland ME and here is our flag. Now. I must admit that this was like very intuitive process. You have to like keep guessing and all that stuff. It's going to take a lot of time, definitely. So what I did was I opened up this uh, restaurants or this hotels page on Yelp and I, and I went down to reviews 
and in the review section i searched for tiffany and there at the end i was able to find the review from tiffany d and that is our flag next task multiple employees have gotten strange phishing emails from the same phishing scheme use the email address corresponding to the phishing email to find the true identity of the scammer the flag is in regular format and this is the phishing email that the uh, the staff has received and yeah you can read all this nonsense content but what we're interested in is the email address the from email address it's from kirios.fanatic1941 at the rate gmail.com so now we have a new email address so let's see what we can do with that uh in maldigo so i'm gonna go back to maldigo and i'm gonna create uh, a new graph and now since i have an email address with me i'm going to go ahead and add an email entity and the email address is kirios.fanatic is it 1941 gmail.com perfect so let's see what all transforms are available for an email entity so if i right click i can go to all transforms and these are all the different transforms that are available for an email entity here is one interesting transform to flickr account so i think this is going to basically check if there is if there exists a flickr account on this email address and i don't think there exists anything because it did not return anything so let's try another transform now to myspace account that sounds interesting as well so let's try to apply that transform and see if it comes up with anything oh look at that so it gave us three results the first one is a myspace profile with the name isaac anderson and then there is an alias entity with the name serial lover 1990 and then another alias entity with the name isaac anderson so it seems like we found the name of the scammer which is isaac anderson who also goes by the alias serial underscore lover, uh, lover 1990 so let's go ahead and extract the actual myspace url of this profile i'll just right click and select two urls to extract the url this is the myspace thing Oh, I think that's just the URL of the icon. So, but anyway, a quick Google search actually led us to the profile of Isaac Anderson, who goes by the name Serial Lover 1990. And on his profile, we can find the flag. This is the flag. Let's look at the final task. Despite all of the time we spent teaching people about phishing, someone at Keeper fell for one. Maria responded to the email and sent some of her personal information Pivot off what you found in the previous challenge to find where Maria's personal information was posted. The flag is in regular uh, format. So uh, from the previous task, we know that uh, the alias of the scammer is serial underscore lover 1990. So let's go back to uh, Maltigo and I'll open up a new graph here. And I'll once again add a person uh, identity here. And I'll change the identity to... You guessed it serial lover 1990 so what i'll do is i will do a bing search to website of bing i will apply this transform to see if you know it results anything in bing search results so let's perform that transform and let's see what multigo gives us okay so it gave us a lot of website the first one is paste bin so let me go ahead and open up that paste pin url in my browser and this seems to be the paste pin of serial lover 1990 which is the username or the alias of our uh, scammer there are two pastes epic art let's see what it is about uh, it looks just like some kind of an ascii art nothing interesting let's go to the second thing chump list i wonder what that means okay so this is some uh, JSON data information about some people, I guess. So what we are looking for is the information of Maria. So let's go ahead and search if there exists any information of Maria here. And there you go. There exists a Maria here. 
and the email address is kibermaria at protonmail.com which means this is the Maria that we're looking for because she's working for Kiber and as the password you can see this is the flag and that is our final task for the Kiber OSINT challenge. So that is how you can make use of Multigo to apply different transforms to your entities in order to collect useful, interesting information about your target. Multigo makes it a lot, lot easier because it can automate stuff for you. It can collect all the interesting information about your target in just a click of a button. That's awesome, right? So thanks for watching this video. If you did like this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below and also leave a comment in the comment section. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates from my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers.